I'm not buying sealed product anymore, and neither should you. Waffles in the morning, syrup sweet and slow. Golden stacks are rising, sunrise in the glow. Sticky choice so grand, breakfast on demand. Smile and take my hand in Waffle Wonderland. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Waffle Cast. So today we're going to be talking about the new upcoming changes in Aether Drift and how they are reducing the amount of booster packs you're going to be getting in booster boxes. A lot of you think this is okay. I don't believe so. Uh, so let's go over today some of my thoughts and opinions on what's going on with all of this and really talk about this because there's a lot to unpack here <laughs> and it's not just booster packs. Okay, so a lot of news has been floating around the internet talking about how with Aether Drift, Wizards of the Coast is now reducing the booster pack sizes of the boxes from 36 to 30. Now this isn't anything new, okay? They've done this before. And I'm going to go over and talk about all of these, uh, this, this programming that they've done to condition us to this point. Okay, so there. Let's look at this post by Blogatog, which is Mark's Rosewater's blogging um, on Tumblr. So that if people even still use Tumblr, I don't know. But anyways, Magic with Class asked. I just heard that booster boxes will be 30 booster packs per box starting with Aether Drift. I want to say that I'm personally disgusted. I feel tricked and manipulated. You've been spreading the rhetoric that the prices of packs are not increasing. You said that the booster box is not more expensive because it has 36 packs. This is no longer true. It looks strongly like your intent was always to raise the price of packs and boxes, but why all the manipulation? Prices go up. Inflation is a thing. It looks like you waited a few years, but your intent was always to sell 30 packs for an increased price. I'm fine with the new price, but don't need all the manipulation. The price of booster packs aren't going up. Aether Drive Play Boosters will cost the same as Duskborn Play Booster Boxes. The booster box with 30 boosters will cost less than the booster box with 36 boosters. Six packs less. So... I uh, and and he confirmed yes they are going to be going down to thirty. I I agree with this guy like a hundred percent right. Um, so this is th this is manipulation. And if we go back over what was it the last um, two years three years back when uh, they actually it's like almost four years probably. Back when they introduced set boosters, because we had draft boosters and we had set uh, boosters and then we had the collector boosters. Okay, and if you remember, the draft boosters still had 36 packs in them. The set boosters had 30 packs in them, but they were juiced up to have more rares and things like that. And eventually they did away with draft and set booster and brought in play booster. And I think the design all along was to make play booster be what set booster was, but condition it in a way to where we're not thinking, oh, this is a set booster, but it really is. So if we go back and look, right, I, I picked like the last three sets. Okay, so we'll start with March of the Machines, right? So if you look at this, a draft booster was 90 is $95 right now, and a, a set booster is $120. And you're looking at a 15, no, $25 increase for six less packs because they're juiced up packs and you can get two rares, three rares. In the older version, sometimes you could even get four rares if you were really lucky. Um, but then it came down to the metrics and everything and, and getting the average was like one and a half rares per pack when you really averaged out the box. So, well, if you get one and a half per box and you're looking at 30 packs, you're still looking at about a little over 42, maybe 45 rares was your average. And if you get a draft booster, you're getting 36 rares with one or two foils. So you got 38. So you're paying $25 more for maybe 10 extra rares. That doesn't seem worth it in my opinion. So then we move on to the next set after March of the Machines, which was Wilds of Eldraine. Same thing, $111 for a draft booster, $124 for a set booster. Same difference, draft booster had 36 packs, set booster had 30. Why are we paying $15 more for six less packs? Oh, that's right, because they're juiced up packs. When really, again, your average was probably one and a half rares uh, per pack. 
So again, you're paying an additional $13, and depending on where the price fluctuates, $13, $15 for eight to 10 extra rares, 10, 10 to eight extra bulk rares? Yeah, no thank you. And so then we go into Ixalan, right? Now this one's a little bit closer, but still not justifiable. $114 for a draft booster, $122 for a set booster. Now I do believe the reason why this one is a little bit closer is because the more and more wizards uh, did these, these pairs, these set and draft, they started to shave your average. These like Brothers War had a pretty good average. I think it was like two or 2.2 rares per pack. And as you got further away from Brothers War, Phyrexia, stuff like that, and you got into Wilds of Eldraine, your average started to drop significantly. I think even Lost Caverns of Ixalan was like 1.3 or 1.4. It was terrible. Um, like, And so the price difference is what, a $12 difference here? No, not even, it's an $8 difference. So it's fairly close because your average was starting to get more towards what a draft booster would give you. And so as you can see, since they did this with, what was it, Zendikar Rising, I believe was the set, when they created this whole experience with set boosters. That's when we started to be conditioned for this. They always wanted to drop it down to 30 packs per box. The reason being is 30 is a much rounder number than 36. Yes, 36 does have a lot of divisible numbers, but the psychology of it is 30 packs is very easy to to manage as far as numbers go. So when they're putting all of their boxes together, if they know that there's 30 packs in it, then they just multiply however many boxes they have by 30. It's a much easier uh, way to uh, multiply the numbers, get up to their figures faster. Not to mention, when you shave the numbers like that, you're able to create more boxes if you create the same amount of packs. So for numbers sake, right? Let's say they make a million packs. You have far less boxes with a million packs when it's at 36 versus 30. Because every six packs that you're shaving, every five increments, you're getting an additional box. So you do the math. I'm not gonna do it right now. I didn't I didn't take time to, to do all this. But the point is, is it as the pack number grows, the gap grows between 30 and 36. Also, if they're able to create more boxes, let's say by shaving off those six, they go from creating 2 million boxes to now creating 4 million boxes, and then they sell all 4 million boxes, the, sell, the sale of 4 million boxes looks better to shareholders and to their numbers and their growth than 2 million boxes. Even though it's the same amount of money, if they're charging the same amount for a 30 versus 36, the unit sales look better on paper. Remember, Hasbro is a corporation. They don't give a shit about your wallet. They don't give a shit about you. They want to make money and they want to make money and they want to look good doing it. So by doing it this way, they're able to push out more units and get more numbers to pad onto their sheets to make the company look better for the shareholders. Thus the stock increases, the dividends increases for their shareholders and everybody at the top wins. That is what this is for. The psychology too of, this is basic shrinkflation. Like, let's look at like a bag of potato chips, right? <laughs> There's a Lay's potato chip screen on this. You go to the store and you see this big bag of potato chips, right? And you're just like, cool, I'm gonna get a big bag of potato chips. You look at the little corner, nobody looks at the corner. Let's be realistic. Nobody cares that it's eight ounces, nine and three quarters ounces, whatever's on there, right? They see visually they're getting a big bag. You open that thing up and there's about this much potato chips in a bag this big, right? Like it's, it's all about perception and deception. This is what they've been conditioning you to because if they were to immediately just go bloop and cut the boxes out with ever, without ever conditioning to us to 30 packs, there would be so much more backlash than there already is. 
Um, so by them doing these set and draft boosters, this was all an experiment, a psychological experiment to see how much they can push the envelope, how far they can go with, how much money can they draw out of us by shifting the product in this direction. That's all this ever was. This was never about providing more value for you. The bait, bait and hook with this was, oh, you can get three rares, four rares per pack, and everybody bid it, including myself. I was like, oh, this is a cool idea, not realizing the consequences that were to come. This is why moving forward, I am no longer buying sealed product. The only time that I will buy sealed product is if it's for my pool games. Like I need booster packs for the pool game itself. But other than that, I will not be buying sealed product to open. I used to love and you know love and enjoy opening booster packs to see what I could get. Now it's like opening a bag of potato chips. I go and spend $7 for a bag of potato chips and I feel like I'm getting 20 cents worth of potato chips. That's how it feels with this product now because of how much they're pushing shit out, how fast they're pushing things out, the quality that they're pushing out. You're spending five, six, seven dollars for a normal booster pack. I'm not talking about a collector pack. I'm talking about these play booster packs, right? This little guy right here, you're spending five, six, seven dollars for it and you're getting like 25 cents worth of value. It's ridiculous. It's because of the overprinting, the reprinting of certain cards 17 times in a year, all of the different things. Now look, I have nothing against reprints. Reprints help the game on a game level, on the tournament scene level, being able to get players in to play at the tournaments. No problem with that. But when you reprint a certain card, like doubling season, seven times in the last five years, it's ridiculous. There's no reason. That card's not even used in tournaments. It's all for commander. But we're not going to get into that. The point that I'm trying to make with all of this, right, is this is not something that they just thought of overnight. We're like, oh, we're going to just change the packs to 30, starting with Aether Drift. We're just, we're just going to decide to make this change on a whim. No. They have been planning this. They have been setting this up. And it's because they want to make money. Plain and simple. I don't fault them for it. I'm not mad. But I am, I am going to uh, vote with my wallet, as they say, and not give them any more money because I feel like the the tactics that they are using to get to to do padding of their numbers and everything. I get it; it's business, but at what cost? You know, you're really hurting the the guys that want to buy a box. I remember buying boxes for seventy dollars of Ravnica, original Ravnica, and had so much fun opening it. Back then, it wasn't like a strain on your wallet. It wasn't It wasn't so bad to go buy a booster box. Now, it feels like you got to take out a loan to go buy a booster box, which is terrible. And if you're ever in that situation, don't do it. Um, and I'm being facetious, okay? Don't take that as literal. I'm not taking out loans to go buy booster boxes. It was, it was sarcasm, okay? Relax. Um, the point is, is the cost is getting up there. The juice is not worth the squeeze anymore when it comes to buying product. Now, I will buy singles. I will buy cards that I need for a specific deck so I can play in tournaments. I'm not saying that I'm just quitting Magic altogether. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm redirecting my funds from what used to be fun to buying boxes to now buying specific cards that I need to do and play the game how I want. And that I advise people that feel in this predicament as I do, find out what works for you. If you like buying boxes, I'm not saying don't buy boxes, okay? But if you agree with how they are controlling this situation and how things are moving forward, I think the best thing to do is stop buying boxes. Because literally what they're trying to do is drive up those sales, drive up the units that go out the door. Because like I said, shaving those six packs off does not seem like a lot. But if you were to take a large number, in fact, you know what? Let's just do it right now, right? I'm just going to do it on the calculator because I am not going to try to guess this. But for number's sake, right? Let's say 20 million packs are made, right? If you divide that by 36, that's roughly 555,000. It's a little over half a million boxes, right? So let me show you on the screen. A little over half a million boxes, right? Now let's say we divide that by 30. 
Now it's two thirds of a million. It's an extra 160,000 boxes that they get to make. And if they sell those boxes for $100 to to their distributors, because you know they're not gonna sell it for 140, 130, because that's what the distributors sell it for to try to make money, right? Let's just say, you know, 100, 100 uh, bucks, that's $66.7 million. But if you were to only do it with 36 in the packs, right? You're looking at 55.5 million. That's an extra 11 and 11 and a half million dollars because they shaved and trimmed and created more units to sell. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm trying to get at, but I hope that gives you a little bit of a visual on why I'm talking about this. This is all about that bottom end right? They're trying to increase profits without having to change much. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of what they're doing. Look, this isn't to, um, this isn't to bash them into the ground and say they're a horrible company. I'm never buying anything from them again. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to enlighten you to help you understand why this shift is happening. And it has nothing to do with the players. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're trying to make this a more affordable product for you. It's not that they're trying to make this an easier product to obtain. No, the price isn't changing. It's literally staying the same. The, the price for the packs is literally staying the same. You're just getting six less packs. So that's all it is. And the way that this helps them in the long run, not only with the units, but even, you know, Packs go up in cost, right? Right now, let's say they're averaging five bucks a pack. Then they shift it up to six bucks a pack. Then seven bucks a pack. And it's like the the um, the saying with the frog in boiling water. If you were to take a frog and instantly throw it in boiling water, what would it do? It would jump out immediately, right? But if you take a frog and you set it in a pot of water that's you know room temperature, and you let it sit there and you let it boil over time that frog's never going to feel the change never going to feel the difference it's going to be a gradual change and that is literally what they did with this it, we we are the frogs sitting in the water and they've been slowly turning up the temperature and some of us are starting to feel the heat and go hmm i'm done i'm out other people still aren't catching it so this is my way of informing you guys in case you don't know what's going on in case you don't understand why it's happening, this is my best way to uh, explain it to you. So hope you guys got something out of it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, this isn't for me to bash. This isn't for me to you know, talk crap about Wati. Yes, I disagree with a lot of what's going on, but it is a corporation. They do need to make money. I feel like they can do it in better ways. That is my main opinion. So with that, let me, let me know what you guys think. Put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think about all this. Do you agree with the points that I brought forward? Do you agree with what I'm talking about? Or maybe you just think I'm a complete dumbass who has no idea what he's saying and you just want to leave a hateful comment and that's okay. I, I will take all the comments I can get. I don't care really. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> anyways, that's what I got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please, Leave a comment, press that like button, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, come back for more content. I do all kinds of stuff. I do streaming, I do videos like this where we talk about subjects. We get into you know the nitty gritty of what's going on with magic and other things. I also do comedy. I'm working on some new skits coming out. But with that, I'm not gonna take up any more of your time. I'm gonna leave you guys like I always leave you. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, stay syrupy, my friends. Waffles in the morning, syrup's eating slow. Golden stacks are